Are you thinking of installing a diesel heater in your RV? <laughs> We're going to share how we replaced our suburban propane heater with a planar diesel heater in our truck camper. And stick with us to the end because we've got a surprising way that we can use this in your rig. Yeah, hurry up and watch this video because this is heavy. <laughs> So yes, here we are at Pen Pack. Um, we're still working on the uh, the turtle, <laughs> separate project. However, Laura thought I was being bored, so she came up with an idea, and it makes sense. Say that again. She came up with an idea, and it makes sense. Our heater in the cabin is very noisy, uses a lot of propane, and is, in my opinion, very bulky and stuff. So what you what we're looking at doing is changing it over from the suburban heater to a planar diesel fuel heater. What I'm gonna do is show you what came in the box. Actually, it's been really good. <laughs> One, two, ready, go. All right, I'm good. You good now? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm golden. All right, you sure? No. Oh, actually, I was pretty impressed with uh, planar. Uh, we did go with uh, plan, planar, planar. planar. Um, there's Chinese ones out there. There's cheaper ones out there. There's blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of diesel heaters out there. However, I really didn't want to have it fail. I'm going to quickly interrupt. Hey, hey, don't interrupt me. And share this cheesy chart that compares the approximate costs of planar versus some of the other standard heaters and including a Chinese diesel heater. As you can see, there's not a dramatic cost difference between planar, Wabasto, or SBAR as far as the system that we were looking at. Obviously, Chinese diesel heaters are dramatically cheaper, but as Gary had said before, we wanted something a little bit more robust. We didn't want to deal with the carbon buildup when we go to higher altitudes. We just wanted something that works. Either of the three name brands would have been fine for us. We ended up choosing Planar mainly because they're in Canada and that's closer than Germany. Heading into this, I was kind of show you how everything came nicely packaged. First off, got the planer heater. We did get the 2D version. Um, there's a 4D and then there's some bigger units as well. We went by their recommendations based on the size of our rig. I've got a truck camper, it's 40 square feet. So we went with that since it'll fit, a, the 2D fits a van. This should be able to handle what we need for heating in our camper. So again, it's pretty small. I mean, it's a 12, 12 inch by four and a half by four and a half. It's come with a, a, a fuel tank pickup. Um, that you can put in your fuel tank on your vehicle or into a can and you can modify this to make it fit um, And then also it has a an exhaust tube. It's made of stainless steel It has an air intake hose with a muffler that also comes with the kit Sometimes the uh, input from the outside of the camper is a little noisy So that should help that it comes with three different harnesses and they're clearly labeled uh, the transition harness This is the fuel harness for the fuel pump uh, and then the power supply harness. Comes with some fuel line, clamps, it's a mounting kit for the harness, mounting kit for the exhaust. It also comes with a muffler so that the exhaust isn't loud. Mounting kit for the fuel system, so this is where your fuel pump would go. And the fuel pump comes with it. Tank. Oh, and it comes in the kit, this exhaust sleeve, I forgot that. So what do we add to And so the one options that you do have is the controller that you prefer to have. So I think there's three of them. We went with the, of course, Laura's favorite, the digital kind. We will be ordering some tubes. There are special tubes that you have to use for that because of the high heat coming out of the planer. I'll order those later once I get this in position. Something else we did order, it's a mounting bracket to right angle so that I can mount it to the floor and then mount the unit. I'm going to use the Suburban heater locations, the intake and exhaust locations in the Suburban to feed the uh, planer heater through the tubes that they're providing for us. And then we also bought a fuel tank they offer a couple different fuel tanks, um, so we opted for this one. And then also we ordered a fuel filter. That's everything that comes in the kit. I'm gonna show you on a truck camper how it's installed. In my opinion, this will be the same way on most rigs. So even if it's a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, they're kind of the same. So if you have a suburban heater, you'll be able to follow this along. Wow. Dear. wow. That's a big one. Oh. So we're going to get started on the heater project. I'm going to take these off. 
and make sure you hang on to all of this stuff because you'll need it later. And this just comes off. We're going to have two screws. There's one screw right there, another screw right there. What we're trying to do is pull this thing straight out through the side of the coach. What we'll have to do also is make sure that your, your switch is turned off if you have one. And then also make sure that your uh, gas line, I went and I shut my gas off and it's showing zero. I used my stove to bleed the line off. We'll still get a little bit of gas here, but at least we won't have as much. Hey, Laura, could you pull the fuse? Oh, make sure the refrigerator's turned off. Okay. And I just pinch these off, just make sure that the wires are covered so we don't have any issues forward. It's out of my handy tool bag. I grabbed a three-quarter inch wrench. Out of my handy tool bag, we got a 13 16. All right, so what I discovered is you kind of have to use the backup wrench. My gas fitting is loose, and I'm gonna use a 3 8 plug. Just make sure that's good and snug. I'm gonna go turn my gas on. So I'm also using a gas, this is something I've used on a regular basis. And so I'm just going to make sure that my fitting is tight. Oh, we got a little bit. So I do have a little bit of a gas leak there, so I'm gonna to need to fix it. There will now be a short intermission. Now that I got that stuff all capped off, I got the fuel capped off, I'm going to take these screws, two screws out. Okay, next steps, um, we got to go inside and we got to take our ductwork and stuff off, so I'm going to go in and do that. So I'm going to remove the ductwork. There's a couple screws that are on here. So what I'm doing is just scooting the unit out just a little bit so I can get to this one. Again, we're just going to turn it till it hits that tab and it should come out. These edges might be sharp. We are also going to fight this gas line just a little bit. Right, so I had to go into the coach and brute force the gas line out of here. So part of the reason I got hung up was this is tilted down and I got hung up on a wooden piece of wood. So now... Use them even very carefully. You may want to wear gloves on this. When installing the diesel heater, you got to think of a few things. One of the most important ones, in my opinion, is where you can put your fuel. One of the considerations that we had was, one, can I get it from my truck fuel tank directly, or do I need to put an auxiliary tank in and keep it separate? I opted for the auxiliary tank, obviously. The reason I didn't go with the one from the truck and directly off my truck tanks is because I did not have a good way to have a quick disconnect. So when I take the camper off the truck, how do I keep my fuel system from getting dirt in it? I couldn't find anything that was really robust that would work for our situation, so I went with the external tank. What we did was we purchased the bigger tank, which is 13 liters. Um, one of the things that comes with the tank is you get the brackets here. There is four brackets. I can only fit three economically in here, but you do have to bend these brackets yourself. So you need a pretty good size vise or some way to bend these. The flat portion of this tank needs to be in the direction of travel. So a couple things of concern that I had with the angle of the tank is can I get my nozzle in there um, from a regular uh, fuel pump at a fuel island? Um, one of the things I did was offset the tank by a little bit since they gave me enough bracket to use. I offset this by three and a half inches so that I can still clear this pump on my camper. It doesn't interfere with my city water. I can put a right angle on this and then just run it down. And then I also took into consideration I can use up a lot of my fuel since I won't probably get a whole, I mean, you'll, you'll still have an air gap up at the top. So another consideration is how we're mounting this for the camper. I have weak points on the wall, so I put an aluminum plate to help dissipate some of that angle. There's also a plate on the inside, and then also I've got a plate right here um, that's dual plated. Uh, my generator has a heat protection shield in there, so it actually is penetrating two sections of steel. So it's pretty robust. It isn't going to go anywhere. One of the specifications in the manual is for the fuel line, 
which is right here, it cannot be any longer than five meters. The one thing that you have to be concerned of is how you're gonna get there in five meters. Ours runs into the slide, and so I run it up and then ran it around with some wiring harnesses so it slides well. However, where the pump placement is has to be within the first meter of the fuel tank. So I put the fuel pump in, I put a fuel filter, we had to buy that extra. So for the pump they gave us, I had to put this about 15 degrees of angle. Uh, I also ran the uh, control harness for the pump from the uh, unit along, right alongside the uh, fuel line. So that way it would just run per perfectly with everything else. As you can see, I put the muffler in, I raised it up, also keeping it at an angle so that it'll keep the water from going up into here, but also the water will drain out. So basically, I just cut this stuff with the scissors. We're going to stuff this insulation sleeve. So I'm just using some exhaust sealer. What I'm going to do is just spread a little bit on here. And I'm also going to do that to both sides here. So I'm just kind of sizing this up a little bit. Because I have a crazy bend in this, it makes it a little bit more challenging. You can kind of see that. A little bit here. Yeah, I'm just putting a little bit on the outside here. Make sure I don't get any exhaust fumes in here. Yeah, I put some sealant around that exhaust pipe there. So this is my air input, and this is going to be the exhaust. I took this metal plate out. This exhaust pipe was causing me a little bit of an issue. So while I got this off, I may as well show you. So this this plastic piece uh, baffle came with the uh, suburban heater. So I took a pipe fitting that's an inch and a half OD and an inch and a half ID and it's just a rubber pipe connection used to put inside of here it fit perfectly and then what I'm going to do is clamp the air hose here I also put a piece of uh, rubber vacuum hose in here just to kind of take up some of the extra slack so that not a lot of water gets in here the vacuum hose is in there and then the air inlet for the diesel heater fits exactly inside there and then we'll just take uh, we'll clamp it and kind of tape it make sure we don't have any air leaks and water leaks all right so the last thing I'm going to do to this thing is I'm going to put some exhaust tape and it's just some exhaust wrap. So I'm snugging those up. That should help lose up. It's going to help with the uh, sealant we put in there as well. We are snugged up. So the air tube once again comes with a muffler so I put that in there like so. So again that bracket I just made it with the fuel tank bracket and some of the other little adapters that they gave you in the kit and then I keep that pushed up in there so we'll tighten that up here shortly. So that's the air intake system for the burner. One of the parts that I'm using right now is the old um, vent that they used on the Suburban. So what I did was I notched this out, it ain't pretty but it'll be functional. And I notched that out so this whole system would fit in there and then the cold air return will be right here. I'm going to create a baffle or something to put there. Because I'm in a slide, I needed to do some creative wiring. So this would probably be for any camper with a slide. What I'd do is I ran the fuel line and my control wires down with the existing loop already there so that we can use it as the marker. I also just put a temporary tie strap right here onto this loop. And when we move it in and out, I want to see if make sure it's going to work. So my wire harnesses come up here. I have one for the power and one for the thermostat. I've modified their connector for their power. Um, I'm using my coach power. They've got big enough wire here that matches the wire size coming out of here. Uh, it's a 12 gauge wire coming up here. Plus it's uh, fused up at our fuse panel. It should be just fine to handle that. So here yeah, I realized when I was putting all of this together that I didn't explain why I've got this zigzag and why, did, why I didn't come out of this straight and put this in here. Well, one of the requirements, I need a three foot run. That three foot comes out to about right here compared to where the unit is. That three feet is where my first elbow is going to start. And then I've got a bend that comes out and goes to this, to this vent and that other vent I had to move this unit back just a little bit and then that way I could still utilize this as an air intake so I had to put a little bit of a bend in there and then same with this 
Alright, so I put this on a man without a torture. Basically, I had to take this one off um, and then put this back on to make sure she was over the nipple. Alright, as you can see, I got the fuel line installed, got the clamps tightened down. Now, this fuel line, when it goes into this rubber, if you don't get it right the first time, you're not gonna, you gotta keep pushing. What I figured out is if you put like a little bit of moisture, the AK spit, on the plastic tube and then push it in, you can get it in a little bit farther. Mine's going into right about here. It's a very tight fit. So we got these ducks through planer. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you what, they got these little grooves that are built in. When you put it in, you get a positive snap into the tube. It will help keep it restrained without having to use a band clamp. All right, I got the air tubes all set up. I got the I got a stainless steel clamp here to hold this one up here to the seat post. I left the plastic one on here because this is plastic, so I don't suspect that'll get too hot. So again, I put the plastic one there, metal one there, kind of hold it all up. That way it's not sitting on my black tank. And then since he slipped loose, I put a 36 by 64 millimeter band clamp on there. All right, so I fed the wires for this um, control module up through the bottom here. Feed this through, maybe. For my, my application, it runs down through there underneath the coach, comes up underneath my slide and runs over here to the unit. Got the uh, monitor all set up, so. One of the things when you first do a startup is you're going to notice a little bit of smoke coming out of here while it burns off the excess soot and stuff that's in there. Um, so once this clears up, it, just for a few seconds, it, and as you can see here, it's starting to clear up already. So it's just typical getting ramped up and the way I was understanding it, it's pretty typical for this. So. All right, we are definitely on now. Oh, it's ramping up now. Even though it says 77 though, it doesn't sound like it's that bad, honestly. I think probably because the tones are less. So this is the decibel reading with me right at, sitting in the chair right next to the air intake and the, the uh, heated air coming out, so. One of the features that I noticed right away was this ramps up slowly. The fans come on and it ramps up real slowly as it's a lot quieter. You don't get the big whoosh like you do from the uh, Suburban. At least that's what our, our experience was. And I'm going to share one of the things that I hope will make winter camping a little bit easier for us. Let me show you. The T that we chose in here is a 70-30, so 70% 70 of the airflow goes into the bathroom, 30% comes over here. So we installed this variable uh, outlet so we can actually close this off if we need to and put all of the heat into the dining room. But for winter, I am thinking this is going to be great if we can keep this open fully, have that 70% close the door and use the shower like we do in the winter. A lot of our uh, wet clothes, jackets, all kinds of stuff can get hung here and hopefully with that get dried very quickly. So kind of exciting. But I guess I'll have to give you an update on that one in the winter months. We will put an update in about six months after we get some exercising it in the winter and uh, we'll give you an update then. Until then, thanks for stopping by. See you on the trail.